showtime. The Capital G Show starts right now. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, and today we're talking about one of the most important pieces of what many consider to be one of the golden ages of Yu-Gi-Oh. Sure, we all know that synchros were the backbone of the 5Ds era, but where would they be without tuners? Completely necessary, but often underappreciated. Tuners were really the gateway to some of the most powerful monsters in the game, and I've decided to break down the best and most influential tuners throughout the years, and I'll be ranking these based off of power, impact, practicality, and then, of course, how how good the monster is at actually summoning synchros for example a monster like luster pendulum the draco slayer is an amazing card but when it comes to being a tuner it's actually pretty mediocre as it can only summon one monster so spoiler alert it won't be making the list well with all that said let's begin number 10 right in hand of the light sworn we kick off our list with a monster that finally brought the archetype into the new era although fashionably late not only was riding an instant staple within its own deck it also made splashing the light sworn engine into other decks far more effective as it had very good stats it could instantly mill cards upon summoning and during the end phase number nine junk and quick draw synchron two of yusai fudo's most iconic monsters these two often showed up together in super aggressive doppel warrior synchro decks but at the same time they both serve different and vital roles as playmakers for other archetypes such as plants and baby raccoons it's also worth mentioning that they allowed you to go and dip into the synchron pool of the synchros Number eight, Tech Genus Striker. Everybody loves tuners that don't waste your normal summon and much like that effect, TG Striker was all about utility. TG Striker was never a powerhouse in TG Stun or TG Agents, but it allowed those decks not only to have field presence without using the normal summon, it gave the decks potential to go into the extra deck despite neither of them really needing the extra deck as you know a condition for their victory. On top of that, TG Striker also floated in an age where floating wasn't especially common. You got yourself a very capable card here. Number seven, Formula Synchron. The game's first level two synchro was also the game's first synchro tuner. In a shocking turn of events, Konami released a synchro that pretty much served as a way of making even more synchros. Formula was not only instant gratification as it netted you a free draw, I mean, who doesn't like that, but it also gave purpose to so many level one monsters who previously had no tangible use other than being, well, like tribute fodder. Number six, Blackwing Gale the Hurricane. If there's one monster on this list that I believe 100% would have seen a lot of meta play, even if it wasn't a tuner, it's definitely Gale. The field presence that this little 1300 attack birdie gave Blackwings was absolutely insane during the 5Ds era, so much so that Konami even limited the card to one after a single format. In fact, I'd even argue that Gale was solely responsible for the almost disappearance of Thunder King Ryo from the competitive meta. Add that to the fact that she didn't actually have to really normal summon it and how much play that it saw outside of its primary deck for example synchro cats and uh, grave keepers and I think that this wouldn't have been a legit list without them. Number five, Fishborg Blaster. If you remember the days of 5Ds, then you knew that this one was coming. A monster that pretty much single-handedly gave Monarchs the speed that they needed to be competitive again wasn't just limited to speedy formula synchron plays. The real beauty of Fishborg was that it allowed you to convert dead cards in your hand into instant synchro-powered offense. And the fact that it could be used infinitely as long as you had cards in your hand was the reason that the card got banned. Fishborg is also one of the biggest reasons that Fish OT became a very successful deck during that era. Number four, Debris Dragon. Now here's a card that's not only amazing as a tuner, but also really capable as an XC maker. Debris Dragon was one of the best playmakers of the entire 5Ds era and its synergy that it had with plants, well, it was basically meta defining. It's also worth mentioning that Debris Dragon stats also meant playing it on the field with no aspirations of a big play was completely safe. Number three, Spore. Easily the cutest card on this list, Spore was one of the biggest reasons plants became as powerful as they did. Another high utility card, Spore allowed you to use your graveyard as a secondary resource to further your big plays. Released in an age where being a level one monster was as good as being a level four, thanks to things like Formula Synchron and Wand for One, Spore is just another example that proves that stats in Yu-Gi-Oh can be largely irrelevant. Number two, Plague Spreader Zombie. You've probably noticed by now that I prioritized a lot of tuners that don't have to be normal summoned to be used effectively, and Plague Spreader Zombie is just a clear example of that. Plague Spreader was essentially the Fistborg Blaster, but for everyone, as decks like Lightsworn, which didn't actually have tuners at the time, got a valuable piece that they didn't have to actually draw into for its impact to be felt. 
Honorable mentions include Krebons, Deep Sea Diva, Jiaotu, Darkness of the Yang Zing, and finally, Genix Ally Birdman to our number one glow up bulb. If not having to use your normal summon raises a tuner's playability exponentially, then surely a level one tuner that can summon itself from the graveyard for free without any restrictions is the king, right? Not only was glow up bulb instantly the king of tuners during the 5Ds era, but over the recent years, it's actually seen decent levels of play in decks like DDD, Lightsworn, and Shadal simply because of its ease of use and the fact that its supposed cost of milling a card will often benefit you in the end. It may be once per duel, but in a game where you can knock out your opponent in pretty much one turn, that condition is largely irrelevant. So let me know what you guys thought. What amazing tuner do you like and you think should have been on this list? Leave that in the comment section below. Thank you for watching as always. Subscribing makes life happy.